First of all, I wanted to make a video on this topic after the release of 4.4 so I can say what I have to say based on what is actually being delivered to the player base and not before that. Probably you don't know me, nor my background, so let me briefly introduce myself so you better understand where I'm coming from. My name is Alex, I'm 33 years old and I'm from Greece, and currently I live in London working as a lead product manager in publicly trading tech company, managing a product which generates 20 plus million US dollars. And I decided to make a YouTube channel with my wife so that we cover various topics about Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail. Saying what's wrong or what annoys you to the game or make demands based on your expectation does not constitute a constructive feedback. So stop being entitled and promote content creators opinions who wage a war flag based on your frustrations. Expecting more and getting less it's a you problem. That being said the reason you should ask for more is linked to an important key performance indicator which is called retention. If the company wants to build up their retention metric they can do so in at least two different ways. A short term way is to seek opportunistic tactics like discounts or freebies to bring customers back to their services. A long term way is by building customer loyalty and asking for extra rewards in 4.4 due to the Chinese New Year should be under this pretext so that Hoyo can question her actions on that front. On the other hand, if you are already playing Genshin since 4.4 got released, then that message does not come across and there is no reason for a company to listen to any customer complaint when the customer always comes back. At the same time, in the tech industry, there are two rules. The first rule says you can't make everyone happy, and the second says customers aren't always right. It should be evident that Hoyo follows both when it comes to their approach to Genshin Impact, and there is a very good reason as to why they do so. Among others, the primary reason, in my opinion, is that Genshin Impact is a complex game, development-wise, making an open-world game and making sure your development cycle will follow a very strict schedule is very important because otherwise your sales will plummet. Therefore, Genshin appropriately focuses on making new content to retain the player's interest while they're advancing the story, building up its lore and releasing new characters. So, do you think they focus on player loyalty or not? If your answer is no, allow me to ask you this question. Isn't a new area which includes resources needed for your account progression, including primogems, enough rewards as a free-to-play player who has has not paid for the game, you still experience a great quality of gameplay with new characters and a nice storytelling experience even without the skid pattern with very few bugs. Here's the kicker though, Genshin is not like other games. As a gacha game, it needs to retain and cater the free-to-play players to create a healthy ecosystem for spenders to actually spend. And it's only natural for gacha players to make direct comparisons with other gacha games and their experiences with them, but that doesn't mean that Hoyo should be concerned about that. Maybe Hoyo's target audience is not an experienced gacha gamer, but a more pure gamer, not previously introduced to gacha games. So if you feel you belong in the experienced gacha gamers group, it makes sense that you don't feel satisfied by the 4.4 rewards as Hoyo knows that they can't make everyone happy. Now let me address the Genshin drama. Content creators creating drama, making videos on said drama, or igniting more drama benefit benefits only themselves and Hoyo. It benefits themselves because every view they get generates more ad revenue for them and greater exposure in the social media platforms. The bigger the drama, the greater the exposure they receive. Hoyo is also benefiting from the drama as with zero dollars spent they get free marketing resources and as more content creators make more videos on the drama, the company's exposure skyrockets. Therefore Hoyo wins, content creators win and the demanding player base gets light and receive nothing more than more ads. In every industry there are key opinion leaders and the gaming industry sees them in the faces and voices of the content creators. Regardless of presenting yourself as a key opinion leader or not, since you have an audience and a voice, you have the power to influence or at least be perceived as an influence to the development of the game. Therefore, if you as a content creator don't want to be perceived as such, or even more so if Hoyo doesn't consider you as 
as a key opinion leader, you should say so and address your audience accordingly. Of course, content creators are not expected to be aware or even understand development cycles, development resources needed for the game, and development costs, and are entitled to their opinions. But all opinions are not worth being shared. So, you may ask, Alex, what's the takeaway from this whole rant? It's simple. Use some common sense. If you like the game, enjoy the open world it offers and simply play the game. If you feel unappreciated from the way Hoyo is treating you when it comes to Genshin, don't take it personally and remember that you can stop playing the game. And finally, it's only a game which is meant to be fun. If you don't find any fun in it, give a chance to another game that piques your interest.